It's part two of our conversation with the great Holly Knight talking about Tina Turner. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. We're going to put up a list of all the songs. Well, I couldn't put up the list of all the songs. There are too many. Some of the songs, more popular ones, that Holly Knight wrote for a whole bunch of artists. Most notably, though, Tina Turner. She wrote a lot of songs for Tina Turner. On this episode, we talk about Tina and stuff. You've given a lot of music, or she's covered a lot of your music, Tina Turner. Better Be Good To Me is just one of those songs that sticks to the bone for me. And I know everyone looks at, you know, the best, simply the best. But Better Be Good To Me is one of those songs that I've carried in my little tickle trunk for a lot of years. How did it start with her covering your music? I and mean, what, what led to that? My band Spider recorded Better Be Good To Me before Tina did. And we happened to have a singer that she was, you know, she was white, but she had a very sort of soulful R&B kind of voice, even though the music was more rock. And um, I wrote that song actually with another, with our record owner, who was Mike Chapman. And um, we wrote it pretty much in one day because I went to him and said, we need, we need to write another song. And I think it, that you and I should write the song. And we did. And uh, our version is also really cool. It's a little bit more druggy or like like, more like Lou Reed to take a walk on the wild side or something. But Tina, you know, she heard the song when she was in a one of those playback meetings. You know, they were trying to pick songs for her, her first record. She had just pretty much been signed to a new record deal as a solo artist. You know, it's kind of an honor because, well, it's always an honor. But just the fact that when she did that record, they were listening to a lot of stuff. And, you know, we were one of the few lucky people that got on that record because it was massive. And it sort of set the tempo for a relationship musically that I had with Tina in as much as me writing the songs and her singing. I mean, she always copied the demos perfectly. And yeah. I mean, it's interesting because I, I've been going through a frustrating time more recently than ever where songwriters are not given enough acknowledgement validation or respect and social media and everything it's all about the branding of the artist and either the artist doesn't want people to think they didn't write they want them to think that they wrote the song or they just don't care so like it's not a point them but it's sort of like hey without the song you're nothing yeah you know? yeah well i noticed that about tina i mean i noticed the thing about when she talks about uh simply the best uh, and i had to double check i went well, wait a minute only night kind of she's she a big part of that okay, song you have my total respect just for saying that because how many people would even notice that but i noticed it because i was doing um you know recently she put out the book her latest book tina turner love story or something like that and every chapter starts with a song that is part of her repertoire and lyric and they're in quote it starts the book starts with the best there's no mention of the writer. I mean, that's, it's hurtful because as a writer, you put your passion and your love and everything you've learned into a song. And I always did that with Tina. As all the other artists that, you know, they record songs, sometimes they were just covers. I mean, what I mean by a cover is it was written already, but it wasn't specifically for an artist. In other words, Spiders did this Better Be Good To Me first, and she did a cover of it. But she really, really copied the singer. And um, it was really, you know, it was like one of my first cuts. It was very, very exciting. And really, Mike Chapman and I wrote that song in a little room in Dreamland Records offices. Nicky Chen wasn't even in the country, but his name's on the song. I didn't understand that one at all, but I was starting out in the business and was told to just ignore it and it would never happen, it happen again. And um, that's a horrible thing to tell a young songwriter, you know? That, that, that's one of those things that would drive me crazy for years. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Nicky Chen is not a songwriter. He's put his name to every Chinny Chap song that was co-written with Mike Chapman. And Mike Chapman was the, really the writer. And Mike and I have written a lot. I've written with Nicky, and I can tell you that there's a big difference of who's who. And that's why we've written so many great songs together, Mike and I, you know? Yeah. So she cut it, and it became the second single on the record, and it's in the, it's in the musical. And uh, I like, what is it you like about it? Because you, you were pretty pretty open about that. Well, what, what, what did well, you better, like about it? Better be good to me. Uh, coming from my background, when I hear something like that of going, I see the, the, the finger pointed, and it's a song of determination to me, and that's why I like it. I like it because I like the, the lyrical content and the attitude of it. It's like even back then, it was just very, it was very empowering for anyone to sing those lyrics to someone, you know? Where were you personally when that song was written? Like, what point in your life were you at? Uh, well, I was about 20, 22. Yeah. 21 or 22. I don't remember. I just moved to California. 
from New York City. I'm a native New Yorker, and I thought that moving out west to do more writing and sign a new publishing deal with my Chapman, I had an offer to do that, and I took it. I was sort of in between being a songwriter and the band when Better Be Good To Me started to take off, and that gave me an indication of, you know, this is cool to hear. And at the same time, John Waite had done um, Change. It's really interesting to hear other people doing my songs and sounding so good. I mean, back in the 80s, I mean, I don't mean to sound like one of those old parts that just around and talks about the good old days when there was a war, but, you know, like the old uh, World War II veterans and stuff. And, and I could see myself sitting on a rocking chair on a porch, like, yep, it was days in the 80s were rock and roll. <laughs> But interestingly enough, there were much better singers back then, I have to say. I mean, there are great singers out there now, but the kind of songs that they sing and the style of their vocals doesn't, it, it's a different kind of songwriting you now. Mm-hmm. Whereas now it's like they kind of work with the track, whereas back then the vocal kind of led the track, which made it really easy to sing along, I think. We'll have more of our conversation with the great Holly Knight coming up next week. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, comment on our videos and share them. If you're part of a Facebook group, please share our videos in the appropriate groups and click the bell notification when you subscribe so that you don't miss any of our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Stream Music.